All right, so in this problem, I have four to the power of x is equal to eight. So obviously here, I wanna find the value of x. So for my solution, first start by rewriting my problem. So I have four to the power of x is equal to eight. Now four here, this is the same thing as two squared. So I'm gonna rewrite this as two squared to the power of x. I, all I did was replace four with two squared. And now eight, this is the same thing as two to the power of three. So I'm gonna replace eight with two to the power of three. So I have two squared to the power of x is equal to two to the power of three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 2 times x, which is simply 2 to the power of 2x. And now this is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m, is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. Meaning in this case, 2x is equal to m and 3 is n. So I have 2x is equal to 3. And this is a simple equation. All I have to do is divide both sides by 2. So then these two cancel out and I get x is equal to 3 over 2. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x plus one is equal to x. So to solve this, I'm gonna start by subtracting x on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x to the power of x plus one minus x is equal to zero. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So x to the power of x plus one, this is gonna be equal to x to the power of x times x to the power of one. Now I have this minus x is equal to zero. Now if I factor out x, I get x times x to the power of x minus one is equal to zero. So now this gives me two equations. I have x is equal to zero, and I have x to the power of x minus one is equal to zero. So x equals zero, this is already a solution. Now for x to the power of x minus one equals zero, I'm gonna add one on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of x is equal to one. Now, because x has to be the same number, we obviously know that, well, what number to the power of self is equal to one? That's gonna be one, right? Because one to the power of one is equal to self. So x is equal to one. And there's no, actually, there's no other number that when you take the power of itself is going to equal 1. S meaning x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. So now to check. The original equation was x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. So x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. And our first solution was 0. So if I plug in zero, I get zero to the power of zero plus one is equal to zero. Now zero plus one is one, so I have zero power to the power of one equals zero, and zero to the power of any number is itself, so I get zero equals zero. Now to check for one, I get one to the power of one plus one is equal to one. One plus one is two, so I get one to the power of two is equal to one, and one to the power of any number itself, so one equals one.
All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to 100. So I'm going to first start by taking the natural log, or ln, on both sides. So I have ln x to the power of x is equal to ln 100. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So this can equal b times ln a. So for ln x to the power of x, I can move x to the front, and I'm going to get x times ln x is equal to ln 100. Now ln 100, that's the same thing as ln of 10 squared. So I get x times ln x is equal to ln 10 squared. And if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, again, I can move 2 to the front. So I get x times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. Now, there's something called the W Lambert function. And if I take the W Lambert function of something in the form e to the power of, sorry, a times e to the power of a, this is going to equal a. So this is basically what the W Lambert function is. So if there's something in the form a to the power, a times e to the power of a, that's going to equal a. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to rewrite x here as e to the power of ln of x because e, the e and ln cancel out and this results in simply x. So I'm just going to rewrite x as e to the power of ln of x and I have this times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. And now this is in the form a times e to the power of a. So now if I take the w Lambert function on both sides, This results in ln x equaling w of 2 times ln 10. And now if I take e to the power of both sides, I get e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 ln 10. And e to the power of ln x, that's going to equal x. So I get x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 times ln 10. And this is equal to 3.597285, which rounds up to 3.597. So this is my answer to this problem. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be proving to you guys that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. So, to do this proof, what I'm first going to do is start with a true statement that 0 is equal to 0, which is obviously a true statement because any number is equal to itself. Now, from here, what I'm going to do is rewrite 0 on my left hand side as 20 minus 20 and rewrite the 0 on my right hand side as 25 minus 25. So now I get 20 minus 20 is equal to 25 minus 25 which is again a true statement because 20 minus 20 is 0 and 25 minus 25 is also 0. Now from here I'm going to rewrite 20 as 4 times 5. So now I get 4 times 5 minus 4 times 5 is equal to 25. I'm going to rewrite this as 5 times 5. So I get 4 times 5 minus 4 times 5 is equal to 5 times 5 minus 5 times 5. And now, if I have something in the form a times b minus a times b is equal to b times b minus b times b, which is this form. Well, notice how we can change the we can like simplify this by factoring out a greatest the greatest common factor. So for my left hand side, we have a greatest common factor of either a or b because both of them are in both terms. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as a times v minus b. Basically, I factored out a. Now, for my right-hand side, all we have is b because that's the only term for my right-hand side. So I'll just factor out b. So I get b times b minus b. So now in the case of this, for my left-hand side, I'm going to factor out 4. So I get 4 times 5 minus 5, which is equal to, for my right-hand side, I'm going to factor out 5. So I get 5 times 5 minus 5. So now I have 4 times 5 minus 5 is equal to 5 times 5 minus 5. And what we can do over here is if I have something in the form a times b minus b is equal to b times b minus b, we'll notice how we can just cancel these two out, meaning that a is equal to b. So in this case, I have 4 times 5 minus 5 is equal to 5 times 5 minus 5. We divide both sides by 5 minus 5. And these two cancel out, these two cancel out, and I am left with 4 is equal to 5. Now, going back to our original equation, I said that I was going to prove that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, right? Well, what is 4 equal to? 4 is equal to 2 plus 2. So I get 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. So I just proved that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. And now I know what you're thinking. This is mathematically, this is mathematically incorrect, right? How can 2 plus 2 equals 5 when 2 plus 2 is equal to 4? Well, look back here and try to figure out where I made an error. So, the error is actually right here, in this step, where I divided both sides by 5 minus 5. So let me write this right here. I have 4 times 5 minus 5 is equal to 5 times 5 minus 5, right? Well, instead of just going on and dividing both sides by 5 minus 5, what is 5 minus 5? 5 minus 5 is equal to 0, right? So this is basically 4 times 0 is equal to 5 times 0. And then now, if I divide, if I try to divide both sides by 0, well, 0 divided by 0, that is not equal to 1. 0 div divided by 0, that's indeterminate. So we can't, we can't actually cancel these out because if we cancel it out, we're implying that 0 divided by 0 is equal to 1, which is wrong. So that's actually where I made the mistake when I canceled out the 5 minus 5s. I wasn't allowed to do that because that's basically dividing zero by zero, and that is against the laws of mathematics. So this means that two plus two is not equal to five. So yeah.